Here you can see the original rock blending pretty bad with our landscape. You can see those hard edges over here, especially over here. You can see the difference in the color and not looking natural at all. But if you select the RVT supported object, you can see blending pretty nicely with our auto landscape material. Enabling RVT for our landscape is pretty easy. First, what you need to do is create your landscape by importing a height map. The height map is available for download in the comment section below. Importing a height map from Gaia will give you this realism that you're searching for. After you import the height map and create your landscape, just go to my auto material folder and drag the auto material instance over here into the landscape slot. When you drag and drop the auto material into the landscape slot, you will have this procedurally generated textures and foliages. After that, pick some rocks from Quicksilver Bridge, whatever you like, and place them in your scene. And here in the final result, you can see that this rock is blending pretty good with my landscape auto material. When you start comparing, this is the original rock and you can see how it blends with the landscape over here. You can see here the sharp edge that you have. This is the RVT supported rock. You can see that it's blending with my landscape pretty good. Let me show you the final actual result. Here you can see that it is blending pretty bad with our landscape. You can see the sharp edge and the rock itself, it's not covered as the level it is. And here we have the rock itself blending pretty good with my landscape. So this is the result that we are looking for, not to have these sharp edges, but instead having this nice and smooth blending between our landscape and the object placed in our world. All right, so let's start adding the RVT support to our landscape auto material. The first step that you need to take is you need to enable the RVT. So go to edit, go to project settings and search for virtual texture. After you search for virtual texture, you need to click enable virtual texture support. Click on the checkbox and restart your Unreal Engine. After you successfully restart your Unreal Engine, close the panel, go to file, click on the new level and select a basic level. Click create. Once you created the new level, select the floor and delete. After that, you need a landscape. So go over here in the selection mode and select landscape. In this landscape, click import from file. And here you need to define a file. I've already created few video on how to create a triple A landscapes using the Gaia program. If you want to use my height map, go into the description of this video and then click on the link and download it for free. So I'm gonna click height map files and I'm gonna select my height map, which is my world. I'm gonna click open, go all the way down, click import. Right now we have our height map set up to the landscape. Go to the selection, turn off the exponential height folk so you can see your level. Then I'm going to speed up a little bit the camera and I'm going to go all the way down to my terrain. The next step is to go to Quicksell Megascans library and download few textures. Here are the textures that are downloaded. Rock Cliff, and this is the key code. You can search by inserting this key code into the Megascans library and just download the same textures. Those key code will be available with the download of the height map. So click here, go to Quicksell Bridge and input this code into the search tab, hit enter and it will find the exact textures that I'm using. So after we set up everything, now we need to modify our landscape auto material, the master material, in order for us to have this RVT enabled. If you don't have this landscape auto material, you can go back into my YouTube channel and watch the video and create it yourself. Or if you want to skip the three hours creation of the landscape auto material, just grab it from my Patreon page. So let's create the few modifications on the landscape auto material in order for us to work with the RVT. Double click on the landscape master material. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to disconnect everything over here and create a set material attributes. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for set material attributes. And in those set material attributes, I want to define the attributes that I'm going to link. Right now we have the base color over here. So we need a base color. Click on the attribute set types on the plus sign and select the base color. This is the first one. So I'm going to connect my debug to my base color. The second one is metallic, specular and roughness. I'm going to add two more metallic, specular and roughness. And I'm going to start connecting. This one is the metallic. This one is the specular and this one is the roughness. I'm going to disconnect those three. Then the next one is opacity mask and the normal. So I'm going to hit again the plus. I'm going to search for opacity mask. I'm going to select opacity mask. And I'm going to connect my opacity mask over here to the opacity. I'm going to disconnect this one. And finally, we need to add a normal. I'm going to add a normal. 
but you be careful add normal not bent normal so adding a normal and connect the normal over here i'm gonna disconnect over here and from here i will need to reroute and i'm gonna add name reroute declaration node and i'm gonna name it landscape material final so those are the first modification that we need to do next let's create the rvt the first thing is we need to get the material attributes so i'm gonna right click get material attributes and here in the get material attributes we need to enable which material attributes our rvt will be aware of so we're going to be aware of the base color specular roughness and normal so base color specular roughness i'm going to search for roughness and my third one will be the normal so after you define the base color the specular roughness and normal we need to get our landscape material final and connect it to the get material attributes I'm going to right click, escape material final, and I'm going to connect it to the get material attributes. Next, we need the runtime virtual texture output. So I'm going to right click, runtime virtual texture output, this one. Here in the RVT output, we need to connect the base color to the base color, the specular to the specular, roughness to the roughness, and normal to the normal. The next one is we need the world height. We need to know what is the height of the world so that our RVT works on the height too. So we're going to take the world position, right click, world position, this one under the coordinates. And what we need to do is we need to connect the Z axis because this is our up axis. So connect to the world height. And then the next one is our opacity mask. So I'm just going to create a variable. I'm holding one on my keyboard and I'm just creating a value. And this value will be one because I want to be visible. After we created the RVT texture output, we need to create the virtual texture sampler and we need to set up a parameter to turn it on or off from our landscape auto material. So the first node that I'm going to search for runtime virtual texture sample, runtime virtual texture sample. So we feed from the landscape to our runtime virtual texture output and then we start getting from this sample what we're going to do is we're going again to set material attributes so we are blending with the material attributes right click set material attributes and in those material attributes we need the base color specular roughness and normal just like over here when we start feeding the runtime virtual texture so from the plus base color specular search for roughness and then the final one is normal. Right now you need just to connect them. And after you connect them, we need a switch parameter where we can say, is it enabled or is it disabled? So I'm going to right click which parameter, static switch parameter, this one, and I'm going to name it enable RVT. After you created this block, we need to add a group. So I'm going to name the group RVT, RVT, and I'm going to set the priority to zero as this, this will be the only parameter to enable. Then if you want to enable, you need to set the material attributes from the RVT. And if you want to disable, you need to load the landscape material final. So I'm going to right click landscape material final. So the idea is simple. If it's true, we're going to feed up everything from the landscape to the RVT and it's going to start to blend with the objects that support RVT. If it's false, it will just get the data from here and ignore the RVT. And I'm going to reroute and name this RVT final. After we created everything, I'm just going to align everything and comment and I'm going to name this RVT. So this is the block that supports the RVT into our landscape auto material. And the final step is we need to output the RVT to our landscape auto material output. So I'm just going to select the final block and select use material attributes. After I select this, I'm just going to right click, search for RVT final and connect my RVT final to my landscape auto material. And I'm going to put a comment over here and name this output. After that, I'm going to save. If you watch my previous video, you already know that my channel is demonetized. So I've decided to switch to Patreon. Becoming a Patreon member, you support me and this channel to keep evolving, to keep creating more and more interesting videos. Besides that, you have access to all the files that I've created from the start of my YouTube channel. 
So right now you can download the water shader, you can download the auto material from my previous video. If you didn't watch it, go and watch it. And you can have access to more in-depth videos about how the things work, like the auto material, the water shader, and a few more videos. And also you will have access to a VIP Discord server only dedicated to my Patreon members, where I am active most of the time. So if you want to support the growth of this channel, and if you want to see more and more videos like this, go to my Patreon page, enroll now, and also you will have access to everything that I'm creating. Thanks everyone. After we create this, what you need to do is you need to go into the auto material folder, right click and create two RVT samples that we need to work with. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to name it RVT. And then I'm going to right click and search here for runtime. And I'm going to add a runtime virtual texture. And I'm going to name it landscape auto material RVT. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to put the following settings. So for my size of the virtual texture in tiles, I'm going to put 12. And for my size of each virtual texture tile, I'm going to put four and four for the border padding. This virtual texture will be base color, normal roughness and specular. And I'm just going to enable the continuous page updates. All right, I'm going to save this one. And I'm going to create one more for the world height. So I'm going to right click, search again for the runtime virtual texture. And I'm going to name this RVT height. Again, I'm going to double click on it. Set the size of the virtual texture in tiles to 12. The other one will be four and four. And on this one, I'm going to select for the world height because we are searching for the height of the world over here. The rest will be as it is. And I'm going to hit save. Now you need to go back to your auto material, double click on the landscape auto material, select the run virtual texture sample. And here, what we need to select is landscape auto material RVT. Select it, hit save. And that's how you can enable the RVT for our landscape auto material. The next two steps, you need to add the runtime virtual texture into your world. So we're going to go over here and search for runtime virtual texture volume. And the first one I'm going to name RVT height. And this will control the RVT based on the height. First, you need to select the bound aligned actor, which will be our landscape. So click on this drop pin icon and pick the landscape. The next step is you need to select the virtual texture that we are going to operate with. So this is the RVT height. So I'm going to select the RVT height and then I'm going to zoom out and click set bounds. So those will be the bounds based on my terrain where the RVT will start working. The next step is we need to select the material for the landscape. So right now we have the RVT for the height. So I'm going to add one more virtual texture and I'm going to name this RVT mat. This will control the material. And again, from the eyedropper, I'm going to select the landscape. And from the virtual texture, I'm just going to select my landscape auto material RVT. After that, you just need to click set bounds. So you can set up the bounds for the RVT mat as we set up the bounds for the RVT height. And your final step is to go to the landscape and search for virtual. And here in the virtual texture, draw in virtual textures, you need to add the two RVT textures that we've created. So I'm going to click here, add element. This is pretty important because it's not going to work if you don't add them to your landscape. So the first one is my material. And the second one is my RVT height. Now, the final thing is we need to set up the textures into our material instance. So double click on our material in instance. And right now we are using the placeholders from the auto material. Go to my mega scans. And let me show you an example here in the texture snow base color. First, we need to enable the RVT. So go all the way down, enable RVT. And right now the landscape auto material is working without RVT textures. So if I try to drag and drop over here, it won't work because those are RVT. Don't worry about it. You just need to double click on this, search for virtual and disable this. Click save. And now you're able to plug the textures over here. So using the non RVT textures, it's still working the RVT. Don't worry about it and just drag and drop your textures into the slots. After you connect all the textures over here in the material instance, what you need to do is drag and drop your material instance onto the landscape material slot. So I'm dragging and dropping. And here you can see that our material is working pretty cool. I also have set up some procedures. And as you can see in our material instance, I enabled the RVT. And when you have your RVT enabled, 
you can see that our landscape is blending with our 3D objects over here. Pretty cool, you have this nice blending between those two objects and you don't have any more nasty seams. But keep in mind when you enable the RVT from the landscape, you also need to enable the RVT for the object that you're blending with. Because right now, our landscape has the RVT enabled and this rock has also the RVT enabled itself. But if you want to skip the line and just get my material that enables the RVT on objects, again, it is available on my Patreon. So this is pretty much how you can enable the RVT for our landscape auto material and this will create and blend your worlds with your 3D object seamlessly, adding this extra level of detail to your game, getting closer and closer to this AAA feel. And before I end up this video, I want to let you know that I've created a Blueprints Masterclass for Unreal Engine 5. It is available right now on Udemy. So if you want to expand your knowledge and not just only create art pieces in Unreal Engine 5, but create some characters, create some game logic, my course is the perfect solution from beginners to intermediate Unreal Engine 5 users. The course itself is 15 hours long and it has all the foundation that you need to kickstart your blueprint knowledge in Unreal Engine 5. So if you want to keep evolving yourself beyond just creating art in Unreal Engine 5, enroll now. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to support me and get access to all my files, also to the auto material that I've created previously, join my Patreon page for $4.99 and with your pledge, you're supporting me to keep creating amazing videos like this. Each one of you can make a big difference by supporting my channel so I can keep making those videos. Thank you guys for watching this video. Happy game development. I'm out.